Hi everyone, welcome to AP Physics C, a uh, topic of momentum. I hope that you guys are excited and willing to learn momentum and impulse. Actually, today we're more going to talk about impulse. So what is momentum? Momentum is the quantity of motion of a moving body measured as a product of its mass and velocity. Momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Okay, I like to show this picture of a rolling snowball because as it's rolling, uh, it's going to be getting more and more snow on top of it, meaning the mass is increasing. And also, as it's rolling, it's getting faster and faster, meaning the velocity is increasing. So more and more momentum as it goes. So I feel like it's a nice example for uh, momentum. All right, so let's move on. So today we're primarily going to be talking about this, impulse, which is the change in momentum. So how momentum changes due to a force, due to collision, different things like that. So what is impulse? Impulse is equal to, is the change in momentum, so uh, momentum final, or is also equal to force times time. So two things to know about impulse, it's equal to force times time, and in, impulse is also equal to the change in momentum, which is like mv final minus mv initial. Usually when we're talking about impulses, we're talking about when things are getting, colliding for very short periods of time, like when someone gets hit by a... Uh, a boxing glove or something hits the ground or two things collide. We're usually talking about impulse during those kind of situations. Uh, so let's look at this. Uh, let's go further into this. <clears throat> Example number one. You throw a ball with a mass of 0.4 kilograms against a brick wall. It is moving horizontally to the left at 30 meters per second when it hits the wall. It rebounds horizontally to the right at 20 meters per second. Find the impulse of the net force on the ball during its collision with the ball. Okay. So again, for part A, we should know that impulse is equal to the change in momentum. Okay? So the impulse, so we're looking for this impulse, find the impulse, is going to be equal to mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So the mass of the ball is 0.4 kilograms. We know that when it hits, when it rebounds off, it's going with a velocity of 20 meters per second to the right. So this is 20 minus 0.4, and right before it hits the wall, it's going to have a velocity of 30 meters per second to the left. So this is negative 30. So let's uh, find what this all this is going to be. 0.4 times 20 plus 0.4 times 30. And we get around 20 kilograms times meters per second. Okay. Now part B says, if the ball is in contact with the wall for 0.01 seconds, find the average horizontal force that the uh, wall exerts on the ball. So we should know that impulse is equal to force times time. So if we found the impulse as 20, uh, we're looking for the force, and we know it's going to be in contact for 0.01 seconds, now we can find the force. 20 divided by 0 0.01. And we get around 2,000 newtons. So let me just kind of explain what happened here. So this ball, it hits this wall. It's going to hit this wall going 30 meters per second to the left. It rebounds going 20 uh, meters per second to the right. We found what the impulse is. Uh, it's in contact with the wall for 0 0.01 seconds, and it experiences a force of 2,000 newtons in those 0 0.01 seconds. Okay. All right, moving on. As a tile from, uh, from the roof of a building to the ground, uh, whoops, as a tile falls from the roof of a building to the ground, its momentum is conserved. True or false? <clears throat> so what we should know is it's going to be false. As the tile is falling, the momentum is increasing. It's getting faster and faster, and the mass is staying the same, so the momentum is increasing. And we should know, we should know this. So <clears throat> what's happening is this impulsive change in momentum so the force is being acted on for a certain amount of time, the force of gravity in this situation, and it's changing the momentum, making it go faster and faster and faster. So let's look at this example, example number two. A soccer ball has a mass of 0 0.4 kilograms, initially is moving to the left at 20 meters per second, then it is kicked. After the kick, it is moving 45 at a 45 degree upward to the right with a speed of 30 meters per second. Find the impulse of the net force and the average net force, assuming a collision time of 0 0.01 seconds. Okay, uh, sorry, so this should be a 45 degree angle. Uh, so again, moving 20 meters to the left, uh, and then going kick that way. 
So actually, when we're trying to do this one, we're going to do impulse. In the, we're going to try to find the impulse in the x direction and the impulse in the y direction. But before we do that, let's find what the velocity is in the x direction after it's kicked and the velocity in the y direction after it's kicked at this 45 degree angle. So I'm going to do 30 times cosine of 45, and I get 21.21. We should know that uh, since it's a 45 degree angle, it's going to be the same thing in the y direction, so 21.21 meters per second. Okay, that being said, let's see if we could solve this. So impulse in the x direction. Like we're going to try to find that first. We should know the impulse in the x. We, to find that, we're going to do mass times velocity phi on the x minus mass times velocity initial on the x and try to see what this is going to be equal to. So the mass is going to be equal to 0.4. Velocity phi on the x is going to be 21.21 minus mass times velocity initial on the x. And at, at the beginning, it's going 20 meters per second to the left. So that's going to be negative 20. So let's figure out what this is going to be. 0.4 times 21.21 plus 0.4 times 21.21. And we should get around 16.97 uh, kilograms times meters per second. Okay? So that's the impulse in the x direction after it's kicked right there. And let's find the impulse in the y direction. So we're going to do mass times velocity fine on the y minus mass times velocity initial in the y. So the mass is 0.4. Velocity phi in the y, it's going 21.21 meters per second in the y direction. And before, at the very beginning, it's only rolling in the x direction, so the initial velocity in the y is just 0. So now let's figure this out. 0.4 times 21.21, and we get 8.48 uh, kilograms times meters per second. Okay, so now that we found the, uh, uh, the impulse in the x direction and the impulse in the y direction, let's kind of combine these values, 8.48, 16.97, and let's find this combined value over here. Oh, sorry, <laughs> maybe that's not, doesn't look the best. Okay, let's find this impulse here. Okay, so that's going to be, I'm going to use uh, Pythagorean theorem, 6.97 squared plus 8.48 squared square root of that, and I get 18.97. So that's my combined impulse. And now let's make that the force times the time 0 0.01. And then I get forces 18.97 uh, divided by 0 0.01, 0 0.01, at 18.97 divided by 0 0.01, and I get 7,000, oh, sorry, sorry, 18.9, <laughs> 18.97 divided by 0 0.01, and I get 1897 newtons. Okay. okay, let's look at this question, conceptual example number two. Rank the following situation according to the magnitude of the impulse on the net force, from largest value to smallest value. In each situation, a 1,000 kilogram uh, automobile is moving along a straight east, uh, east to west road. The automobile is initially moving, number one, moving east at 25 meters per second and comes to a stop in 10 seconds. Number two, moving at east at 25 meters per second and comes to a stop in five seconds. Three is at rest and a 2,000 net uh, newton net force uh, toward the east is applied for it for 10 seconds. Four, moving 25 meters per second and 2,000 net force towards the west is applied to it for 10 seconds. And five, uh, moving 25 meters per second over 10 Second period, the automobile reverses direction and ends up moving west 25 meters per second. Okay, so we're trying to find, uh, what are we trying to find here? The magnitude of the impulse. Okay, so we're looking for the magnitude of the impulse. So let's try to find what the magnitude of the impulse is for each situation. So what we see is we see that it's going to be impulse for the first one is going to be the mass, which is 1,000. Velocity final, so it comes to a stop in 10 seconds, is going to be 0 minus mass times velocity initial, which is 25. So this is going to be equal to 25,000. Okay? Number two, let's see what that is going to be. Number two is moving east 25 meters per second comes to a stop in five seconds. Same kind of thing. 1,000 comes to a stop, so initial, a final velocity is zero. And then we have the initial velocity as 25. So then it's going to be same thing. So even though it takes longer, to uh, shorter to come to a stop, it's going to have the same impulse. Number three, 
uh, at rest and a force of 2,000 new f applies for 10 seconds. So impulse is equal to force times time. The force is 2,000. The time is 10 seconds. So then this is going to change to be 2,000, so 20,000. Number four, moving east 25 meters per second and a net force 2,000 towards the west is applied for 10 seconds. So again, same thing. The force is going to be equal to 2,000 and it's applied for 10 seconds this time, uh, or 10 seconds last time. So this is also, again, 20,000. And number five, we have the impulse uh, going 25 meters per second over 30 seconds. Reverse it ends up going 25 meters per second. So the mass uh, and the velocity final is 25 meters per second to the left, so negative 25 minus 2,000, and velocity initial is going to be 25. So let's see what that's going to be equal to real quick. 2,000 times 25. Oh, shoot. That shouldn't be 2,000. That should be 1,000. The mass is 1,000. My fault. So it's going to be 2,500, uh, 25,000 times, uh, plus 25,100. Uh, so it's going to be negative 50,000. Okay. So we can see number five is going to be the most, and then it's going to be one and two, and then three and four. Okay. All right, let's look at the next example. A uh, 0.015 kilogram marble dropped from rest onto the floor 1.44 meters below. If the marble bounces straight up to a height of 0.64 meters, what is the velocity does the marble hit the floor with? So part A, let's look at that. So a few ways we could just do this, but I'm just going to do potential energy is equal to kinetic energy. So we have the mass 0.015 times gravity 10 times the height 1.44. And then this is going to equal 1 half m 0 0.015 v squared. So we're going to try to find what the velocity is when it hits the ground. Uh, so let's do a little bit of math to figure that out. 0 0.015 cancels out. 14.4 times 2 square root, and we get 5.37 meters per second. Or actually, it's going to be negative 5.37 meters per second because it's going to hit the ground five, uh, going down 5.37 meters per second. Part B, what velocity does marble come up off the floor? So same kind of thing, but we're going to do kinetic energy going to gravitational potential energy. So we're going to see what it comes off the floor with. 1 half mass, 0 0.015 v squared, is equal to the mass, 0 0.015 gravity 10 times the height. It goes up to a height of 0.64. So now we can find what the height is. Uh, 0 0.015 cancels out again. So we get 6.4 times 2. And the square root of that, it comes up at 3.58 meters per second. Okay. Part C, what is the magnitude of the impulse uh, for the marble? So when it hits the ground, the ground is going to develop, uh, develop a, uh, deliver a certain amount of impulse. And let's find what that is. Impulse is equal to mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial or the change in momentum. So the mass of the marble is 0 0.015. It comes up off the floor at 3.58 meters per second. 3.58. And then it leaves the floor, or it hits the floor, mass 0 0.015, with a velocity of negative 5.37 meters per second. So let's see what this gives us. 3.58 times 0 0.015 plus 0 0.015 times 5.37. And we get 0 0.13 kilograms times meters per second. Okay. Now the question part D is, if the marble is in contact with the floor for 0 0.025 seconds, what force did the floor exert onto the marble? So we should know impulse is equal to force times time. So impulse is 0 0.13, which we just found. Force is what we're looking for, and it hits the ground for a time period of 0 0.025 seconds. And now we can find the force, 0 0.13 divided by 0 0.025, and we get 5.2 newtons. Okay, let's look at this. In a collision between two objects having unequal masses, how does the magnitude of the impulse imparted to the lighter object by the heavier one compare with the magnitude of the impulse imparted to the heavier object by the lighter one? The lighter object receives a larger impulse. B, the heavier object receives a larger impulse. C, both objects receive the same impulse. D, the answer depends on the ratio of the masses. E, the ratio depends on the ratio of the speeds. So what we should know is when they hit each other, they're both going to experience the same exact amount of force. This is Newton's laws. 
Newton's third law, and they're both going to be in contact for the same amount of time. So if the force and the time is the same, that means also their impulse is the same, just in opposite direction. So both will have the same impulse, just in opposite direction. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And next time, we're going to be talking about some calculus-based problems on this chapter.